Okay, just to recapitulate uh, in terms of kinematics, okay. we are just dealing with rigid bodies right now. One thing that we have to have in order to define the kinematics is a fixed frame of reference. Okay. In this particular uh, set of modules, we will deal with fixed frame of reference and denote them with capital letters, capital X, capital Y or capital I, capital J for the direction vectors. Okay capital K, capital Z for the other direction. Okay. Now, there may be many rot either translating or rotating frames of reference. So, let me call this as x 1, y 1. So, I can say i 1, j 1. There could be a, a rotating plus translating frame of reference with respect to which something else may be defined. Just to give you an example, the earth is rotating. So, I am let us say uh, stationed in Chennai, okay, which is just a little bit displaced from equator and I am moving around okay, and there is movement that I have to define, its velocity, its acceleration, but what I know is movement with respect to a particular point in Chennai. Okay. So, if I have to do that, first I should fix a frame of reference which is fixed from the angle of uh, how Newton has defined the equations of motion okay. and that is what we call as fixed frame of reference. I am not going to go into details of what is fixed frame of reference. Let us just go with how Newtonian frame of reference has been defined. Okay. Given this, once we have an idea of how this uh, frame is moving with respect to the fixed frame, we can bring all the motion which are defined with respect to moving frame of reference with respect to the fixed frame of reference. For example, if there is some particular body or particle let us say P which is defined with respect to the moving frame of reference and with respect to this moving frame of reference, I see that there is some change that is hap happening to P. Okay. But what I know is how it is changing with respect to this fixed frame, this moving frame of reference. If I have to find out what this movement P is re with respect to fixed frame of reference, I have to do the transformations that we did in the last class, okay, in the last module. Basically, one thing that I have to know is let us say this is some small o, this is capital O, let us say. Let us say this is some r. Let me use capital R to denote the origin of this. Then I can write what is P with respect to capital X, capital Y given the movement of this uh, moving frame of reference. The moving frame of reference can do two things. I am just going to stick to those which are Cartesian frames. Now, these two could probably rotate. So, this frame probably could rotate as well as move. Okay. Now, the movement of that particular uh, frame, the translation of that particular frame can be easily defined through the change that occurs in R and you have a rotation that takes place about a particular axis. So, it I am just showing it in one plane here, it can be generalized to three dimensions. With respect to that axis, there is a rotation that takes place on this uh, moving frame of reference. We use this rotation in order to define what happens to P with respect to capital X and capital Y. Okay. There could be multifarious uh, moving frames, for example, I should I could be in Chennai and there is a vehicle moving okay. inside there is this studio let us say and I am moving around within the studio. So, I have one frame which is Chennai that is moving with respect to the fixed frame. Within Chennai I have a vehicle 
in which let us say this studio exists which means I have another frame of reference with respect to this frame of reference. Let me call it as I 2 J 2 okay. and I could be moving around here okay. let us call this as P prime which is Shiva moving around like this. Okay. If I have to define this I will go hierarchical way, I will go from this to this find out what happens to this P prime with respect to P and then to this. Alternatively if it is possible for me to find out the moment which refers to translation and rotation of this I 2 J 2 with respect to capital X capital Y then it is easy for me to write down directly what happens to this P prime. Okay. So, I once I have a transformation available between each of now these frames then I am done. Okay. That is basically what we did in the last class we just stopped with just one rotating frame, but if I have another rotating frame it is just a hierarchy of rotations and translations that I have to take care of okay. and this is all there is to kinematics of rigid bodies. The moment we have deformable bodies then we have to look at the relative changes within the deforming body. Okay. Let us not explore that right now. Let us having looked at kinematics of rigid bodies, we will look at kinetics. What, what is kinetics? Kinetics is the one that relates kinematics or the motion to the forces okay. and it relates these two through a law. In this particular case we use Newton's laws in order to relate them. Okay. In most of the laws you will have a kinematic quantity and a kinetic quantity and the relationship is proposed by the law. Okay. Some people call it as Newtonian principles or Newtonian laws. The difference is a debate that still goes on. Okay. So, I am not going to go into that. So, given this let us say I know kinematics of the body. Let us say I know the kinematics of the uh, rigid body. And I now want, wish to relate the forces acting on the rigid body to the kinematics okay, and that is what I want to do. So, let us look at how we can do that. Let us say there is a rigid body, okay, a fixed frame of reference that I always use. Let us assume for now with respect to fixed frame of reference I know all the quantities especially the acceleration quantities. Okay. The first exercise that I may do is to look up the acceleration quantities with respect to fixed frame of reference. Given that I can now proceed to look at the equilibrium of this. Now when I say equilibrium here I am talking about satisfying Newton's laws okay. and what does Newton's law state F is equal to m a right. There are two things that happen here this is okay for a particle because there is no resultant moment that we are looking at. In a rigid body however, we have a moment as well as a force that appears. Okay. The force is directly handled through F equals ma and the moment has to be handled appropriately. Okay. I am going to look at the result first and then we will go back and find out what the quantities are that we have in the law all right. So, let us say I have a rigid body here and whose mass is already known which is m. Okay. 
I wish to find out the relationship between acceleration and force. Okay. Let us say for now there are some external forces acting on the body. So, let us say F1, F2, let us say there is a moment M1, let us say F2, F3 and so on. In statics, we already looked at this particular type of set of forces and uh, found out how to write down the static equilibrium equations, right. What we did there is we looked at all these forces. Finally, we put them all together and said there is a resultant force and a resultant moment at a particular point that I can take, okay, where this is sum of all the forces and this is sum of all the moments and the moment of the forces. So, M is sum of all the moments plus sum of all the R i cross F i, all right. This is basically what it is. We did this exercise in the uh, statics problems. Uh, given a particular point, we did this, found out these two and said, since there is no acceleration, this should be equal to 0 and this should be equal to 0. So, that we have equations that solve for a static equilibrium requirement of the rigid body. Okay. Now, it is a natural extension that I want to bring in, which is it is no more in static equilibrium, it is in motion. Okay. The motion could be constant velocity, which means acceleration is 0 or you could have constant angular acceleration, etcetera, etcetera. Okay. Now, as far as the force resultant is concerned, I can look at this particular rigid body and focus on this particular point. Let us say I am going to call this point as P. Okay. I have looked at the resultant moment and resultant force at this particular point P. Okay. Now, what, what could be happening to this rigid body? This could, rigid body could be moving so that P moves along and it could be rotating with respect to P, pivoted about P. Okay. As we have already uh, talked about, uh, we can take any point on the rigid body and describe the motion of the rigid body through a single translation of that particular point in question and a rotation about it. Okay. Supposing this rigid body has taken another shape over here, we did this exercise earlier and if this is the point that we have as focus, the first thing that we could have done is do a rigid body translation like this, so that you get something like this and a rotation to accomplish the configuration that we have here. Okay. Given this, I can describe the motion of this rigid body with respect to this reference point P as a pure translation and a pure rotation. Okay. And therefore, I can attribute the translation to F and the rotation to M, simple. Okay. So, what should I write? If the translational acceleration of this rigid body at point P is let us say A P okay, and the angular acceleration. So, I am just going to say this is A P, it is a vector and let us say there is an angular acceleration. Okay. Is this a vector? Yes, this is a vector because you will have an axis about which it is rotating all right. and there will be an angular acceleration. Knowing these two, it is possible for me to now, I am ready to write down the Newton's equations. Okay. Looks simple, but there are many other derivations that are involved in order to arrive at this particular thing. All right. So, let us just move on and write down. This is no more valid. What I will do is, I will chop off this and chop this off. Since it is an acceleration, 
and it has to obey uh, Newton's laws. It is equal to the total mass times A p because the force resultant in question that I have found out is with respect to p and I find the acceleration of that particular point in the rigid body that is A p and I get an equation. Remember this equation F equals m A p is a vectorial equation. How many components? F has 3 components, A has 3 components which means 3 equations I can write x, y and z all right in a Cartesian system. I am just going to stick to Cartesian system so it is easy to talk about all these things okay. The other is moment. What result do I get? Again a very simple result we get m happens to be the same thing I can take all right but the right hand side now will be some i times alpha and what is this i? i is the polar moment of inertia about p along the axis of alpha. I will repeat this again supposing it is having an angular acceleration about an axis and I know the axis. I will take that axis passing through this p and find out the polar moment of inertia I p and that will give me m is a vector, alpha is a vector. If you look at this, I will get an understanding of how it is occurring. Okay. Remember the in this equation these two are coaxial in the, in the sense that the direction of AP relates to the direction of force similarly here alright. Now how many equations do I get? I get one equation here, another equation here, a vector equation and a vector equation which means 3 plus 3, 6 equations. So I have 6 equations just like in static equilibrium. Okay. There may be unknowns here unlike here which is right hand side equal to 0 in the static condition. Here the right hand side quantities also may not may be unknowns. Okay. So we essentially the problems related to kinetics will involve basically unknowns to the right hand side or left hand side. And most of uh, some of the literature talks about this as a inertial force. I would avoid that. I would go for F equals ma directly because this completely defines the law that I am using. Is this clear? Knowing this I can do kinematic kinetics directly. What are this A p and alpha? They are accelerations and angular accelerations and linear accelerations with respect to a fixed frame of reference that is described by F equals m a as very very important to know. Okay. You would have done this exercise earlier but I am just stressing this over and over because many times we may we make a mistake in this particular from this particular angle. Okay. Fixed frame of reference, fixed frame of reference that should get fixed in your mind. Thank you.